I don't know anyone who doesn't love a good fairy tale. Probably all of us have grown up on stories of Prince Charmings and beautiful young maidens. Each of the tales filled with epic voyages and quests, enchantments and spells, dragons and witches and wizards. But what would you think of a fairy tale that consisted entirely of the words, once upon a time there was born in a land far, far away, a handsome prince, and everyone throughout the land lived happily ever after. <laughs> it's as if the main part of the story is missing, isn't it? Well, that pretty much describes the feeling I have when I read the portion of the Christmas story in which the angels appeared to the shepherds. It starts off rather nicely by giving an account of an angel of God who appeared to some shepherds one night bringing some really great news. As we listen in, we hear that a baby has been born who has been given the title of Messiah. And then all of a sudden, we're wrapping up the scene with a chorus of angels singing the first century equivalent of, and everyone lived happily ever after. Their version is, glory to God in the highest heaven on earth, peace among those whom God favors. I had the sense that we missed something here, something really important. A vital part of the glad tidings which appears to have gotten lost. And scripture even alludes to the message, but unfortunately, without giving us many clues about its content. In verse 17, after the shepherds had seen the baby, we read, they made known what had been told them about this child. Verse 18, we read, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. The message given to the shepherds even seemed to amaze Mary herself. In verse 19 we read, But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And we hear one more reference to the message in verse 20 when we read that the shepherds praised God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And I find myself wondering what had been told them that seemed to set everyone on, the hear, on their heels? What was it that rocked everyone's world? Was it the circumstances of the birth? Surely not. Babies were born every day, and given the poor conditions of the day and time, it wouldn't have been earth-shattering news that a feed trough was being used as a makeshift cradle. Was it the fact that he was the Messiah? Also unlikely. You see, would-be messiahs were popping up all over the countryside. History reveals that right before the birth of Jesus, there was Judas, son of Hezekiah, Simon of Perea, Atheringes the shepherd, and Judas the Galilean. And quite honestly, would-be messiahs continued to make their claim years after the life of Jesus of Nazareth. People claiming to be the messiah appeared to have been a dime a dozen in first century Israel. So what was the message? What information did the angel reveal to the shepherds that so utterly amazed everyone? What prophecy or prediction was made about this newborn baby boy? Was it a message of hope? I would almost think it would have to have been. A glimpse of the life of first century farmers and laborers indicate that they lived in a subsistence culture, meaning after they were paid for their work, they had just enough to get by until the next day. Life was lived one day at a time. They were taxed not only by their local government, but, but by the Roman Empire too, which was usually a higher tax than their local. 
The picture of the first century peasant is like someone standing up to their neck in water. A small ripple coming into the shore is enough to cover your head. Living was a moment by moment thing, never knowing when you'll drown. Did the heavenly message provide hope for these people of first century Israel? And more importantly, does it provide hope for you and me. Can we who are weighted down by the cares of high technology and low income find hope in this Jesus who we call the Christ? And if we can, is it a very present hope? A hope that carries us through today? Or is it a hope for the future? Or is it both? Or was the message one of peace? Did the angels reveal that this baby would grow into a man that was in tune with a peace that passed all understanding? And would Mary and the rest of the people under, misunderstand that to, that to mean an end to the conflict between one nation and the other? Hopefully not, because in fact, more wars would be waged in the name of this man, Jesus, than the imagination could conceive. More blood would be shed on his behalf than anyone could possibly dream. Jesus tried to explain the peace that was his when he spoke to his own disciples toward the end of his ministry. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The birth of this baby would mean the advent of peace within the lives of people, even in the face of war, illness, and poverty. <clears throat> With his birth would come the knowledge that all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well, in the words of Dame Julian of Norwich. And certainly there had to be an element of joy in the message. In fact, the angel very pointedly said, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. And it's my belief that there are still yet those who have not experienced the joy of this Christmas message because they have overlooked the last three words of the announcement. All the people. Joy comes in the knowledge that God's gift to the world is a gift to all the people. If indeed the message was one of hope, and if it was also a message of peace, then there had to be joy. Because when hope and peace come together, the offspring is always joy. Even more than the joy that comes from watching children tear into Christmas morning gifts. Even more than the joy that comes from the crackles and pops of firewood glowing in the fireplace on a winter evening. Even more than the joy that comes with the taste of hot chocolate or the sound of the cat's loud purr of contentment. Even more than the joy of all these things would be the joy that the world would come to know because of this baby boy. A deep abiding joy. A joy that undermines and overturns the pain and suffering that tries to take root in our souls. A joy that undergirds the knowledge that we are God's own beloved children. Yes, maybe the angel told the shepherds that the world would come to experience joy like it had never before because of this baby's birth. Or maybe the thing that so amazed people was the message that this baby that had been born was the incarnation of God's love. And it was that love that would conquer all things. It was that love wrapped in flesh that would embrace the outcast, the lonely, 
the abandoned, and the rejected. It was that love that would forgive the cruelest of enemies. It was that love that would heal the broken and lift the fallen. Maybe the angels told the shepherds that this child would teach the world a lesson that it had forgotten, an ancient lesson which binds all great religions together, a lesson so simple that everyone can understand it. Maybe with the birth of this child, he would once again remind us that if we can just love God, the source of all that is, has been, and will come to be, and if we can love each other, then everything else will fall into place. And maybe that's what amazed the shepherds and Mary and all the people who heard the Christmas message. Maybe that's what Mary pondered in her heart. And maybe that's what the shepherds praised God about on that evening about 2,000 years ago. Or maybe not. Maybe it's a mystery and always will be. And maybe that's the real wonder of Christmas, the mystery, the unknowable, unspeakable, unreachable, unpreachable mystery of God made flesh. Maybe that's the part that's missing, the part for which there are no words to express God's presence in each person's heart. There's something very satisfying about the mystery of God, isn't there? So it seems our Bible has given us the opening and closing words of the Christmas message, and we get to fill in the rest. God whispers that message to each of us, individually and uniquely. God speaks to us the Christmas message in the way that is most meaningful for each of us. In the way that we most need at this moment in our lives. May the mystery of God's hope, peace, joy, and love abide in your hearts this Christmas day and throughout the coming year. Amen. Amen.